So of course we have two opportunities coming up, both of which run right through. You don't need anything but some supplies in your car to get to ones. I mean, I have friends who are eclipse chasers that have been on boats in the Antarctic, and, you know, on high Himalayan mountains. You don't need to do any of that. No planes are needed unless you want to fly somewhere. John, right from Utah. It is, and we'll talk about that one, yeah. So we have two eclipses coming up. One is this October, and that's an annular eclipse, total annular eclipse, and then the one next April is a total solar eclipse. So we'll discuss kind of kind of what those differences are. That's a great slide. And all by the way, well, all these graphics are off a of, uh, website called nationaleclipse.com. Mm -hmm. So they have all the graphics, they have all the time information for all the cities and the path to totality broken down by state. So if you want to go to Oregon and see that one or whatever. All that information is right there. Um, but before we start, I thought it would be a little bit of fun to look at eclipses both from a historic standpoint and also from a scientific standpoint. So a little bit of eclipse lore. Eclipses, of course, have been well documented throughout the millennia. I mean, there are records of them in Chinese literature and on cave paintings in Europe and everywhere in between. So mostly solar eclipses, lunar eclipses also, but if you think about visual drawings that people did um, in, in traditional societies, it's harder to depict the lunar eclipse. So solar eclipses are pretty, pretty spectacular. Like so many other words in astronomy, eclipse is a Greek word, means abandonment. And a lot of traditional cultures in a lot of traditional cultures, a solar eclipse is, is, was seen as the sun was devoured or eaten by a god or an animal or some kind of a spirit. And the thinking was, you know, that, the god, that, that god was unhappy with us humans, so he took the sun away. A lot of cultures, um, this is just one example in Japan, you know, the god of darkness swallowed the sun and villagers offer sacrifices and beat drums to bring the sun back. So, and today, if you go to a sol total solar eclipse, you might actually find someone beating drums. So, just saying. Another common common um, belief in lore is that it's bad to look directly at the sun. It actually is bad to look directly at the sun, but you know, um, it's also considered, was considered bad luck to be outside during an eclipse. So a lot of traditional cultures, like the Navajo culture, traditionally, instruct their people to stay inside during eclipses. We actually had some Navajo traditionalists during the 2017 eclipse instruct their villagers to stay inside. Like, okay, welcome to the 20th century, but so they the accidentally country. protected their eyesight. Yes, exactly. <laughs> That's exactly right. Without knowledge. Yes. And then in a lot of traditional cultures, mainly in Central and South American um, traditions, it was believed to be bad if you were pregnant to be outside during an eclipse, that this would cause birth defects or possibly even a stillbirth. So those are just different traditional um, stories. You know, you think about the old, the, those traditional cultures and they're so steeped in storytelling as a way to, to educate their populations that you, know, you come with these stories. So has anyone ever heard any other interesting eclipse lore? I'll, I'll start off because this is one of my historical things that I remember that uh, when Cortez was exploring Mexico, he was aided dramatically by an eclipse. Because as they came in, to, and Montezuma was the head of the uh, uh, Aztecs, the Aztecs actually thought Cortez was a god because he was there, he literally arrived a few minutes before the eclipse. And because of that, they thought he and all his men were gods. Yeah. And that set up Cortez to do a lot of damage because the initial thing when they heard the people coming <coughs> was that Montezuma was going to let them come in and then they were going to attack them and eliminate them. I and knew it, that they thought that he and his cohorts were gods. I didn't realize it was due to the eclipse. It that it happened the during the eclipse right. and that's why that they thought no sense. they yeah. showed up. And it was just one of those impacts of history. Now there's, I can't remember the other story, but it was in Egypt somewhere 
where something was happening and the cliff went right over some of the pyramids and there was something going on and then I for like me I tried to remember all day and I couldn't do that but maybe the pharaoh lucked out and a lot of the mythology it's like they thought something because people would look up watch the eclipse and then they'd go blind and a lot of the you know, mythology that was created is mythology was created to explain what was going on and what happened oh god took away my sight well we know now that the sun took away our you know that one side so it's just interesting how things have happened in the past to fit in with eclipses so a lot of things have happened and you know i'm sure there's a lot more stories like that but, So super cool. Yeah. So now that we've looked a little bit at the kind of the history and the storytelling mm -hmm. side of it, let's look a little bit about what actually happens in an eclipse. So the first thing to remember is this has to do with the relative positions of the sun, the moon, and the earth. Okay. It's fascinating not to get into this, but there are other things that can come between the Earth and the Sun, primarily the planet Venus, or Mercury, but Mercury is so small. And that's called a transit. It's the same thing as an eclipse, but you can't cover the whole sun. So, so the important things to know are, and I'm sure you all know this, but it's always helps to go through this. Mm -hmm. The sun illuminates our solar system, right? Gives us warmth, gives us nice, warm, sunny days. <coughs> that, I'm I thought afraid. the Earth was the center of the universe. It is. <laughs> Galileo. It is. My cat is the center of the universe. <laughs> In her little delusional world. <laughs> um, and of course, the moon, or our moon, or all moons, shine from reflected sunlight. This is a really important distinction when we start looking at what causes eclipses. So what causes an eclipse? This is where the audience gets to get involved. So I need three volunteers. So, okay, come on up. Come on. All right. No. Two more. All right, come on, Dee. One more. This is perfect. How about someone in a blue shirt? That, that way I don't have to use the pillows. There we go. <laughs> All right. I am so <laughs> bad with names. It's too Carrie. Funny. Carrie, I was going to call you Callie, and I knew that wasn't right. <laughs> Carrie. Carrie, you is going to be our son in our orange shirt. Okay? So come on right here. All right. <clears throat> Dennis here is obviously going to be the earth. So be there. Now move forward a little because uh, Keith here is going to be our moon. All right. Dennis is the watcher. Yeah. So Keith. It's our moon, and he orbits around, go orbit around the moon. That's what he does. He orbits around the moon, orbits around the moon. As he comes in here between them, stop. He gets between the Earth and the sun, right? And that is a solar eclipse. He is blocking the sun's light from Earth, okay? And as Keith continues around, keep going, keep going, stop over here. Okay. Now Keith is in the shadow of the Earth, and can't see the sunlight, and that's a lunar eclipse. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's a really easy way to remember it. So thank you to our <laughs> fabulous. So that's the difference between a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse. Okay. The solar eclipse, the, the moon travels between the earth and the sun, and then the lunar eclipse, the earth is between the the Moon and the sun. Okay? Very important. Why don't eclipses happen every month? Does someone know? If that's the case, I mean, the moon goes around the sun every 29 and a half days. Why don't we have an eclipse every 29 and a half days? Yeah, yeah. The, Earth's, the, the orbit that the moon goes around the Earth is tipped at about 11 degrees from the orbit that the Earth goes around the sun. So it's only when that you get through that oscillation that you get an eclipse. Okay? And they come in, they're very, they're Periodic, they're easy to calculate. I did not go through the math tonight because I figured everybody's head would explode, including mine. Um, but you can look up how, how you calculate um, when eclipses can be or going to be. Um, because obviously this has to do with the orbit of the moon and the sun, excuse me, the moon and the earth around the sun, solar eclipses can only happen when the moon is between the sun and earth, right? which is by definition a new moon. Now it's a lunar eclipse is a full moon because it has to be on the other side. So that's always something fun to, and as we come into the eclipses, because we're doing two solar eclipses, you know, when you hit the, whenever the new moon is 
in September, they'll go, oh, the next new moon is an eclipse. And the one in March will be like, oh, the next new moon is an eclipse. It's kind of fun. You'll, you'll get excited, you know. It's like a 29 and a half degree rainbow. <laughs> so why can't everyone on the Earth see the same solar eclipse? A lunar eclipse. If you're standing on planet Earth and the moon is above your local horizon and it's in eclipse, you can see it. But that's not the case with the sun. The sun the solar eclipse has a very narrow path. And that has to do with the fact that the Earth casts the shadow on the moon during a lunar eclipse, and the Earth's shadow is quite large. Whereas the moon travels between the sun and the Earth, and you're just getting that disk as it moves. Okay. Now we've had some Astronomy 101. Let's look at October. So the October annular eclipse, and we'll talk about what annular eclipse, starts up on the top and runs south. Okay? But what is an annular eclipse? Yeah, you see more geometry. <laughs> so the moon's orbit around the Earth is not perfectly round, just like our orbit around the sun isn't perfectly round, and actually no orbit of any body in the solar system is perfectly round because it's actually a very unstable orbit. All orbits run in ellipses, basically. Okay? Some are more elliptical than others. But if you think about it, we are, we are just coming out of being closer to the sun on Earth. So, no, I'm sorry. Coming out of being farther from the sun. I do that all the time. Coming out of being farthest from the sun. We are farthest from the sun in July. We are closest to the sun in January. <coughs> So, and that's common. So, the Earth, I mean the moon, we live in a great time. Our moon is at a place in our orbit where when it's closest to the Earth, it just covers the disk of the sun. If we live 10,000 years from now, that won't, have, won't happen anymore because the, the Earth, the moon is slowly receding from the Earth at a, I don't know, a couple inches a year or whatever it is. I didn't look that up. That is very slow. So in you know, several thousand years from now, you'll never see a total eclipse again. But for now, when the moon is closest to the Earth or at perigee, it covers the disk of the sun just barely. Okay? When it's furthest from the Earth in its orbit around the Earth, that's at apogee, and it doesn't quite cover the disk of the sun, so it leaves a little ring. That's actually a, an annular eclipse there. There's a little ring around the sun. Okay? That's just the difference between that and a total solar eclipse. That's what we're going to see in October. We'll see the rings. Hmm? We'll see the rings. You'll see the ring all the time. Okay. Yes. Yeah. And I just heard that it's. I think our the, our moon is the only moon in the solar system that's at the right distance and the right size mm -hmm. to cover up the sun like that. Yep. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. 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 Sure. I don't know if this is going to make sense, but when I mean, how many years it's for the moon to move away. Mm -hmm. Is that going to mess with our gravity? Well, That's a really good question. What's going to happen <coughs> if the moon is so far away? I don't know. The tides might be a little bit. Yeah, tides might be a little bit. Yeah. 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 So is there something with the moon this month? I mean, it's we get two full moons in August. Or no. Oh, we do? We get a blue moon in August? Yeah, That's so the, the blue moon in August is supposed to be really it's a super moon, which is in August. So what does that mean? That probably means it's closest to the sun. It's closest to us, probably. So it, what does that mean, closest to you? You just talked about it. But so it's closest yeah. to the Earth. So it's not a perfectly circular orbit around right, the Earth. Okay. So sometimes it's closer to the Earth. Sometimes so then the next time it goes around and is a full moon, it's a little farther away. A little away. bit further away. Oh, okay. That would be my guess. You also have some, some atmospheric dispersion that can happen. <clears throat> Um, in the late summer and early autumn. That's why you get the term harvest moon. So this being close gotcha. is good in that it's going to give us that annular yes. eclipse. Well, it'll be, yes, exactly. Exactly. It gives us the converse. Yes. Does everybody know what a blue moon is? Sorry, I just threw that out there. Yeah. Yeah, it's the second full moon in it within the same month. Yeah. And this one's different because it's the Super yeah. Okay, I heard a term today, and, and Loretta and Alex are talking about this all day. 
Mercury in retrograde. Retrograde. What is that? And they're saying how, how it messes up computers, relationships. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's astrology. That's a whole different topic. <laughs> okay, okay, so that has nothing to do with the so retrograde. So, confused. Retrograde is a, so the, the inner planets of the solar system, which mean, basically just mean Mercury and, and Venus, they're inner, they're closer to the sun than us. Well, sometimes if you watch them, track them night to night in the pattern of a star field out there, sometimes they will move backwards. That's what retrograde means. In, in, in reference to the Earth. In reference and, to the Earth. Does it mess up everything? No. Oh. <laughs> but I'm not going to vouch for it if you're an astrologer. Please, please, jump in. <laughs> so, so also on the super moon moon is Saturn is in conjunction with the moon. So they're like great Ooh. Last time I heard uh, Saturn was in the seventh moon. <laughs> <laughs> That's Everybody awesome. Here. Yeah. So we'll have to go out and look at the end yes. of the month. Yeah. Yeah. So a couple, four four years ago now, it, it's, it happens sometimes, especially in the late summer when the planets all get aligned. In our night sky, you'll get three or four planets up there if you stay up all night, you know. That was going on earlier in the summer. Yeah. yeah. Yes, we had that earlier in the summer, yeah. We had in 20, when did we do that great trip? 2018. In 2018, we had something like five planets up in the night sky. And we were on this trip, we were out, we were out on the Great Barrier Reef actually, and it was like, I was up all night screaming when we that planet. There would be no diving for me at seven in the morning because it was so good. <laughs> so let's look at the annular eclipse. Um, one of the things to note, if you've never looked for a good place to go to look for an eclipse, when I showed that path of the full eclipse, your, your time in totality, the time of maximum <clears throat> coverage of the sun, will start at a, a lesser time, it will grow to some center point on that path of totality, and then it will descend again, okay? So if you're on the ends of it, it's shorter than if you're in the middle, okay? It also matters, where you are. So this path is just broken in for this specific area. The red lines are where it's the path of annularity where the sun is um, totally covered minus the rain, obviously. The blue is the center line. That also is the time of maximum time in annularity, okay? And we'll go through, I'll, the next one, next slide will show you a little bit about that. So, so and the second red line is? So this is, so, here, if you're south of here, like we're not quite in yeah. path of totality, neither is Cedar. You know, over on this side, Durango is just, and Moab are just barely off on the other side. Right. So they have traveled a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. But the closer to that blue center line you can get, okay. the longer your gotcha. path of totality is. Now, for those who have done eclipses before and are looking for unique ways to visit eclipses, you might want to notice that Roswell is <laughs> right there in the center line. Uh, yeah. Who wants to go do aliens in an eclipse on the same day? Yes! <laughs> you also, I didn't mark this one, but Albuquerque is also in the middle of the center line and the balloon fiesta is going on. I've seen several companies doing their regular balloon fiesta trip that they do for people that come in for it and marketing that one separately with the eclipse with it. Wow. Right, right. So, which is commercial. commercial. Yes. Yes. You were going to say? Well, I was going to say, when it, Shannon and I learned about the eclipse a few years ago, we said, Roswell. <laughs> Roswell. It, it, is, it is, if you've not ever been, it's a very unique town. It's been there <laughs> for... Have you ever been the house pretty close to there, and they're going to be in, in Kenya. I knew we could go to his house. Oh, <laughs> that can't help you with that one. We were there for one of their party weekends, and their park was a lot of fun, but it was, you know, your typical small town, you know, yeah. <laughs> hokey, uh, you know, fiesta day, but uh, but they live, but they live that UFO. They mark it up yeah. all they yeah. can, yeah. and I think honestly, if I if I could make it work, I would love to go to Roswell because I know all, and it's yeah, I want to see the eclipse, but I want to see the people who come down to go to the <laughs> eclipse. I think that would That's just be a blast. Good point. <laughs> 
So what we're going to do now is we're going to zero in on that area, which is obviously the area closest to us. Mm -hmm. So this is the, this is the path we're actually down here, right in the corner, and there's cedar. This is 15 running up there. Um, this is one edge of totality at two minutes, and this is the northern limit of the total, basically totality. And you'll see two minutes, three minutes, three thirty. You get into the center, and it's four. <coughs> right here is about four minutes, forty seconds. Okay, so but anywhere in there, you'll get the whole experience. It just depends on. If you're crazy and you want to get you know 30 seconds more, you can go here. So what I do is I, I yeah, we'll mark them at the times for Beaver. It's really easy to get there. It's right up to 15. Mm -hmm. I went up and scouted about two weekends ago, and there are a ton of great places to just hang out, parking lots, you know, things like that. Open areas. Open areas, yeah. And we always need a reason to go to the creamery. You always need a reason to go get ice cream. <laughs> so, all solar eclipses last about two and a half hours, two hours and 35 minutes. So it doesn't matter how long totality is, doesn't matter where it is on the planet, from first contact to last contact, it's about two and a half hours. By, by comparison, a lunar eclipse can be four or five hours because you're dealing with, it. again, that shadow moving instead of the actual disk of the planet, or disk of the moon moving. So in Beaver, um, first contact at 9:08 a.m. Mountain time. So it's not it's not super late in the day, but it's it's not early either. We did the eclipse in Hawaii, and it rose. The sun rose in partial totality at oh, seven in the morning. So you know you can have that experience too. But you get the whole thing. I got a question. Yeah. Okay. I looked at that website that you were just talking yeah. about. It says Beaver it was like 10:30. I don't know. You said no. Oh, I haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, annularity when you're fully in annularity, it begins uh, at ten twenty six. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, that, that's, that's okay. Yeah. No worries. Yeah. And then um, the duration of annular is four minutes and thirteen seconds, which is a good solid amount of time. That's enough time for you to really be able to enjoy it, immerse yourself in it, still get some photos if you're using camera equipment, and experience everything around you. And then last contact right before lunch. So. <laughs> um, yeah, either of those websites yeah, are very good. <laughs> so those are two different websites? Yeah, those are two yeah, different websites, yeah. I was thinking though maybe that's like a sub. No, so I've, I've been using nationaleclipse.com because it's really convenient to work with because yeah. they break everything down by state and you can go looking. Right. Like for Utah, you can go find towns and see what you like based on the map. So does this, input, this yeah. um, slide came to comes from the Utah one? Yeah. Uh, no, it comes from National. Oh, it does come from, yeah. Yeah. The Great American Eclipse was just another one I found um, that was specific to Utah. And I'm sure Great American Eclipse has the same breakdowns right. on them. There's several out there. Well, there's also, a list to type in. Yeah. <laughs> National Eclipse, I haven't looked at the other one, but National Eclipse is they're starting to populate um, different <coughs> eclipse viewing festivals and fairs and stuff for yeah. different areas. So if you're interested in, you know, pairing it with some event, or you, you're gonna be in Texas and you wanna, you know, do something while you're there and do this, it's, you can find stuff. So I, I kinda like what they're what they're doing. So once you've gone through October, you've seen an annular eclipse, you're totally fascinated. Now you wanna go see the big prize. Now a couple of you have seen the big prize, yeah. There's one more question yeah. about the annular, it's about mm -hmm. the corona. Mm -hmm. okay, I know you Yes, the, the corona gets really bright. Yes. Is it going to be the same? No, you won't see the corona on this one. The corona is the very outer atmosphere yeah. of the sun. Okay, so yeah. this will just be, like, this looks like looking at the sun, but it'll be dark in the center. Yes, exactly, exactly. It'll be more like a, a wedding ring. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I mean wedding ring. Yeah. Okay. But we don't see the, the corona. one that you're bringing is almost like a, an engagement ring that you're talking about where they close and you can get that nice pop and it. Right. It looks like that. Right. If you want to see the corona, any prominences, the solar activity <laughs> shooting off the sides of the sun that might be happening, the whole thing, you want to do this one. You don't want to. This one's a little more travel for us. This is a little more travel, still can get in the car. So this one starts in the south, runs up maximum maximum totality is somewhere in Texas through Arkansas and then runs up through the Canadian Maritimes and out into the um, yes. Now, 
We'll talk about this a little more. This is April. Has anyone ever been in the upper Midwest and upper East Coast in April? Your chances of clear skies are not it's great. It's pretty cold. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Early April. So, something to just think about. I know the best viewing is down through that, that Texas-Mexico border area. I value my life more than going into that part of Mexico, yeah. so. <laughs> but if you're all for it, go for it. I don't know I hear about it, though. <laughs> so this is uh, the April 8th event. I did this for Waco, Texas, because that's a good centerline town with a lot of tourist attractions if you've ever been to Waco. Sorry, I <laughs> can't help myself when I get to say I'm going to Waco, Texas. Um, anyways, <laughs> yay! <laughs> yeah. um, but it's um, but it's it's got a better chance of clear skies than a lot of the other areas, and it's right in the center line. So again, two and a half hours for the whole event. This one starts at noon Central Time. Yes. Um, Totality is one thirty-eight. It's also in Waco four eleven, so it's almost identical in in its kind of its path as the other one. And then last contact just before three. So um, that's a shot from Wyoming in the 2017. A lot of these other ones that you'll see are from Wyoming in the 2017. So that's a good place. Go on the website down there. You can find other places to take those in. Now, if you really want to be nerdy, <clears throat> if you noticed on the path, they crossed. Yeah. And they cross in Texas. So there's San Antonio. So you're, you could go out there twice. See them both. I don't have the time for either of them, but you can go look them up. So you know. I, they, I'm sure can... I will know people who will do this. Oh, yeah. I think maybe Texas is going to have a major boon in income, you know, for Yes. <laughs> so if you want to do this, go for it. It will be you and about a million of your closest friends. <laughs> but if you want to meet anyone that works for NASA, works for a local planetarium, Works at a university astronomy department, they will probably help you. <laughs> so, what do you need? What is some eclipse survival gear? Eclipse glasses. We'll go over those in a minute. Something to sit or recline on. I love this guy was just lying on the ground using her backpack. But you do get tired. They're like watching anyone go out and look at the Perseids. I know it was cloudy on peak night here, so you had to leave. But yeah, you go out and you sit for two or three hours out there with your neck up. <clears throat> Lawn chair with your clients or a beach no, chair. Hold on, she's got her glasses on the camera. Yeah, I have no idea how that yeah. is. I think that's risky. I do too. Who I knows if it works? I remember reading that you're not supposed to do that. You really shouldn't do that. You should have on your eyes and then. Yeah. Put your phone on. You need cameras and but filters. She's using it as a filter right now. I guess she's using it as a filter and trying to take some pictures. If you're going to go out and do photography, make sure you take your camera to a camera store. Or, or a telescope um, provider and get the right mm -hmm. kind of filter for your specific lens and camera, okay? They're all very specific, they have to fit a certain way. And I recommend you doing that now, <laughs> not on <laughs> October 13th. Mm -hmm. So I don't know where there are any good camera stores but you can around here, but you can start Googling and, and yeah, I'm sure you can find something um, based on your whatever you're going to be using for equipment. Okay. Bring some drinks and snacks because even though the eclipse is two and a half hours, you'll be out there longer than that. So, um, eclipse glasses. Let's discuss eclipse glasses. I did not because it was raining when we came down. I don't have my dark glasses. Eclipse glasses are not your dark glasses. Okay, they're these beauties. <laughs> you put them on. I cannot see anyone. Okay? These are what you want, okay? You also don't necessarily want those kinds. Unless you're going to put drinks in them, okay? <laughs> we were in Virginia in 2017, right before the eclipse. Um, the eclipse across America. And then, yeah. <laughs> we were in a um, market or drugstore or something one night. And I turned a corner and I saw these and I started laughing. And he comes over and he says, what's so funny? I said, I will guarantee you the store manager told somebody to go buy Eclipse glasses. And that's what they bought. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I bought them. I wish I had. 
No, you want those. <laughs> those are what you want. The ones that go on your funny. Oh, yeah, hilarious. Like, well, you said they were glasses. You said eclipse glasses? <laughs> I can put a big sword in them. Exactly. Yeah, you might still want those. Yeah. <laughs> but those are the kinds you want. The ones that go over your eyeballs. Yeah. Okay. Now, for those who've done an eclipse, have you ever done a partial eclipse? Obviously, if you've done a total, you've seen the partial. So you can have a lot of fun. You'll see a lot of people out here, out around doing different activities. You can get a cardboard box with and poke a hole in it and put some white paper in it. You can see the partial eclipse. You can use, this was on a dinosaur dig in um, Wyoming, so that got some kind of a dinosaur, some kind of a sifting mechanism they use out on the dig side. You can use a kitchen colander, anything with round, small holes, okay? Just make sure you bring some white paper. So you can see this is this. It's all little partial eclipses. Oh. <laughs> so it's really fun, and especially if you're out on the site with a lot of kids. There, there will always be kids around if you're with any other people. Somebody else might not have thought to bring a, you know, kitchen colander or something and some white paper, and that will, you know, they'll be fascinated with kind of that, that aspect of it too. So. And then what are some eclipse chasing survival tips? Also from the dinosaur dig in Wyoming on Eclipse Day. Yeah, um, what's the number one thing preventing you from seeing an eclipse? Clouds. Yes. Clouds. Yay, clouds. Um, because we're on the main body of the continental U.S., and y'all will be probably driving, you can get in the car and move. So I reckon you will all become, if you're going to either of the eclipses, you will become the local weather experts. Like launching this rocket, you become the local weather expert. You can get the thing off the ground. You will know every prevailing wind, storm, something that some tropical storm that's happening in Mexico. You'll know it all coming into the eclipses. Yeah. Yeah, I belong to a Facebook astronomy club that's um, it's run by the University of Utah astronomer. Oh, okay. So yeah. Yep. Yeah. He does these super deep. I mean, my eyes glaze over because I don't understand it, but all the geeks do. Mm -hmm. But he does do weather maps because you know they have all these people with telescopes that go out and and you know take pictures of whatever event is going on. Yep. So I think he'll have he'll have that. So anyway, in other words, I guess the point is if you can um, contact universities yeah. and, and try to get the weather yeah. information. That's a great them. idea. I didn't know that you had one, but yeah, that makes sense. Has, yeah. Yeah his name is uh, Kurt but anyway, yeah, if you go on Facebook and um, you yeah. can probably join the group. Yeah. It's very informative. Yeah. And ICL, which is the uh, continuing editor for mm -hmm. seniors here, I don't know if you're aware of Yeah. The last, before the semester, and they had an astronomy class, and it was full of people in them. Oh, cool. Well, quite a big classroom. Mm -hmm. And I didn't check to see their schedule yet. I don't know if it's out or not. But you know that would be another good contact mm -hmm. is through the university. They pair they they're partnered with Nephi Tech. Yeah. So yeah. So That's a good idea there. too. Yeah. yeah. So there may be some way to mm -hmm. uh, and it was a it was a woman. Can't think of her name either. <laughs> Crappy memory. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway, universities. And um, getting back to the glasses, do you specifically look for a certain rating on them? Or so do you know you're not being just a piece of plastic. These are just my um, hand-me-downs from the last eclipse. They're just a mylar filter. I'll pass them around. I do have some for folks that are here tonight. Do you? Um, I don't know if they have specific yeah. ratings. What I would do is make sure you buy them. Again, these websites all are selling them in packs. So yeah, I saw it um, says slash store. Yeah. So and the good thing see. is, if those are scratched, do not wear them. Yeah. Because oh, yeah. that little scratch will be burned into your eye. A yeah. Laser beam. Yeah, so I always keep them in a plastic bag when I'm not using them. Um, yeah. I suppose a welding helmet might work. You can, yeah. Welding helmets work. Um, they're a little dark, but they're fine for partial. Yeah. I'm not, I've never tried it, so I don't know what it would be like during the annular, for full annularity. I've tried my sun anyway. Yeah. It works. Yeah, it works. Give it a try. Yeah. You can also, if you're really fancy, you can use a full hydrogen alpha filter, but that's a professional 
pastor on with a piece of equipment. And I know I have them running around the house. Don't they, everybody? <laughs> you know? and, and even now, they, they've expanded the glasses to where you can get plastic. Yeah. Glasses, like, you know, like your regular sunglasses. They oh, have really? them like that now. Oh, really? It's mm -hmm. more expensive, but it's like, hey, if I'm going to go chase an eclipse every other, you know, every other year, it might be a nice thing to have. Or every 350 years. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so if, you're, if you're doing that, uh, I look at the prices. I mean, they sell them mostly by bulk, like 10 or yeah. 10 to 20 at a time. And if you buy them in bulk, they're about a buck fifty each. If uh, you buy them mm -hmm. secretly, they're five, seven, five to eight bucks each for these little right. cheap glasses. And yeah. I'm sure once the stores around here start putting them in, they'll be you know two bucks to three bucks. I mean. Yeah, yeah, that's something I was going to suggest is if you're looking to buy them. You know, buy a bunch and as a group or yeah. something, and, and do it now. And because I remember there was a shortage. Yep, do them now. It was like I could yeah. not find a pair. Yeah. Somehow, I think a, a very sympathetic friend. Um, yeah. Had extras and things like that. Yeah. 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 Look for yeah. them now. But get them, get them get them off of one of the um, eclipse specific sites because they're they're definitely rated for say the eclipse. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily buy them off. I can see. <laughs> well, if they work, they work. It showed the certificate. Okay. Of the um, the rating. Mm -hmm. Well, if they have a, if they have a rating on them and and they're they've got a certificate, then go for it. You can always get them and give them a quick try and see you know what the. You've also got two eyes. Yeah, <laughs> that's the hang up. <laughs> so, but weather, weather. Let's get back to what we need. And weather is the number one thing keeping you from seeing the eclipse. Okay. Um, be prepared to move. I know, again, that Hawaiian eclipse, we got up four in the morning because the sun rose in the partial eclipse, went out to the car to load the car, and it was raining out. And I'm like, we're on an island. Our options are somewhat limited. <laughs> Quick, I came running back in, get in the car. We need to go scouting. And we found a place that was, it was still cloudy when the sun rose, but it blew out. We could see totality, and then kind of the clouds rolled in. We got very lucky. But just be ready and, like you said, watch the weather, find a good solid weather site, and just kind of plan your options. Um, get to your viewing site early. You will. Yes, yes. Normally it takes you an hour and a half to drive all the way to Brian Head, right? So about an hour and a half to Beaver, it'll probably take three hours that morning. <laughs> it's just like, you will not believe how many people will be out on the road. It may not be so bad going. But when you leave, yeah. I mean, when we left Wyoming after going to the Wyoming one, we were in a traffic jam in Wyoming, in the middle of nowhere, on a two-lane road <laughs> that literally it was two hours. You know, granted we went like 15 miles at least in that time period, but it was like it was amazing how many people and people will drive off the road in their RVs and they'll get there and now they're going yeah. back to where the where they're staying. Yeah. And everybody converges on the art arteries of uh, access and that's mm -hmm. the little two lane road. Yeah, the little two lane road. <laughs> so yeah. be prepared. I mean, the freeway going up the 15 shouldn't be too bad, I wouldn't think. It but, shouldn't uh, be, but have some patience. But getting on the yeah. freeway might be a little difficult. Yeah, just be ready. Yeah, get there early. You mentioned it, Leah. The eclipse is the main event, but look around during the eclipse, during partiality, during totality. Don't don't be so focused that you're not noticing what's happening around you. When you do a total eclipse, now the only times I've done annular eclipses, I've done an annual eclipse. We were at SeaWorld, it was January, it was almost sunset, and it was probably in the 40s out, so it was freezing cold. So you didn't really notice a lot of temperature change and stuff. The only other annual I've done, I was sitting in the Albuquerque airport watching it, <laughs> for a flight. So I've never done one outside. So I don't know, <clears throat> well, I shouldn't say that. I've never done one outside in kind of clear, normal, midday viewing conditions. But a total solar eclipse is like twilight you get down into those last few minutes and then through totality and then out the other side. It's very dark. The temperature change is dramatic, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. seriously, bring a lightweight jacket because you will be shocked. 
Um, and watch the animals around you. Watch the birds will all go to roost. The you know the animals that want to nest at night or go to, will will go bed down, and then they'll get back up again. You know the nocturnal animals will start wandering out and go back because it's super cool to watch what's going on around you and watch the people around you. There's still a lot of people out there that are into astrology. They'll bring crystals or they'll bring pots and pans. I don't understand that concept, but that one's on, you know. You'll find musicians. When we were in the Hawaii Eclipse, the, the girl next to us was writing poetry all the way through it. You know, it's really interesting. And then you'll find the science geeks that are out there. <laughs> So you'll meet all kinds out on the, wherever site you are. And that's part of the fun. And that's, that's always what I say, have fun. You know, that's an experience. It's, it's not something we're like, I would say we're not likely to do again, but you know, we all did it in 2017, but you know, it's gonna be a while again. So go have some fun with it. Questions, yes. Do these occur at the same period, like the same number of times you No. So the, actually they do sort of, but what happens is um, sometimes the solar eclipse will be in a place where you can't really view it. I mean, there have been solar eclipses that have been down near the Antarctic, you know, and basically if you're not on a research vessel in the middle yeah. of that area, you're never going to see it. So, so then how frequently does an eclipse occur you, anywhere in Earth? I knew you were going to ask me that, and I should have looked that up. It's not a super straightforward answer, but it's not hard. But if you go, if you just Google it, it'll give you all the information on how you can calculate it and they'll have all the next ones. In fact, um, I saw multiple things when I was looking for a video today. I found multiple <coughs> websites that have just the US with tracks of all the eclipses for the next like 200 years, solar eclipses. Yeah, so things like that. There's more than you, you, you would think. There can be three to five yeah. a year. But and since the Earth is mostly covered by water, yeah. not all the eclipses are two. I mean, two and a, two hour. I mean, wait, two hours and thirty four minutes. Because depending upon where they occur, they may only be up in the northern well, hemisphere, way up, and it, they can only it can be shorter. But the ones that go through go through and down through the yeah. for the whole way are going to be two and a half hours. Yeah. <laughs> um, you also have this wide range of periodicity. So the 2017 eclipse, the maximum totality was in the two minute range, low two minute range. It's like, like Thermopolis, which is right on the center line, was still only a, maybe a minute and a half. The 91 eclipse, it ran through Hawaii. That, the main, main part of that eclipse ran through Western Mexico. And there was over seven minutes of totality if you were in Mexico. I can't imagine what that must have been like. And the weird item in Hawaii is that the center point in Hawaii on the big island went right over the Mauna Kea Observatory. Yes, another fun one. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, so plan your, plan your fun. Well, the nice thing is that there are ones on the Saturday. I don't know what April 8th is. I think it's also a Saturday. It's a Monday. It's a Monday? Oh yeah, I think it is. Cause, so I have a space conference every year in Colorado Springs. For whatever reason, they decided to not only start it on April 8th, they initially put the teacher conference that day. And I'm like, you know no teacher's gonna come, right? Because <laughs> you're first of all, you're you're in Colorado Springs. Yeah. You're not that far from totality. Yeah. So nobody yeah, they're working on that. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> That's right, it's on Monday. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to say that one of the things that I thought really fascinating me was the horizon. Because yes, sunrise or sunset or whatever you want to call it, it's all around you. If you look way out, the sun is shining yep. all the way around. I thought that was pretty cool. That's actually a really good point. I had <clears throat> I have pictures of it, but it, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's all sunset and it's all sunrise. 